All right, so let's continue with our stack length compiler. Last time we have added a few extra tokens to our language. Those are, you know, data, function, and these are going to be like uh, build the building blocks of our programming language, right? And the rest of the language is going to be made up of using these functions in a stack-based way to, you know, do stuff. All right. And last time we implemented the AST for data. We still have to implement the AST for functions. But I think what I want to do first, so let's let's just see the example how it works. So let me just make and then run it on the example. Right, we print the AST here. So we print the name of the data type, which is IVEC, and then we print the fields. So what I want to do for today is uh, do the assembly. And I guess we are just gonna implement something in assembly, just, you know, a chill assembly programming session. And we'll try to implement these functions that I talked about in the readme. So if we check the readme, here I said that when we have a data structure defined, we'll have one time, we'll have the constructor of that data type. Um, and then you pass the fields and the name of the constructor and you actually build that thing on the stack. And the other thing that gets um, made by the compiler is accessors for these fields. So for example, ivec2.x, uh, it gets an IVEC structure and returns the X field. Pretty obvious. So what I want to do today is try to think how these things are going to look like in the assembly. And maybe if we have time, we'll do the function as an AST. But now I feel like this is going to be more interesting to try to figure out. So let's see. I guess example Asm. Well, I want Anyway, uh, doesn't matter. But yeah, you can see that we have the, the data structure. So we have the name of the data structure. We also have the field names and the types. So it should be quite easy to have some C code, right? That takes all of this information and generates those functions for us to be able to use them. So let's just see how they're going to look like in assembly. And then these are the all the tokens that we parse, so not important right now. So yeah, let's take a look at these. Uh, let me just clean this thing up. So this thing I don't need. Right. Um, so let me just. I'm just thinking like. Test. Oh yeah, test assembly is what I actually need. So let me just delete this uh, example. Awesome. Example o test o, we just need test asm for our testing purposes, right? So uh, the main method, right? Let's let's remove all of this stuff. We won't need it right now. I would also do here a sort rdi rdi just to have uh, nothing on the stack. So let's keep this for the moment and let's try to compile FASM and then let's link test.o into test and then we'll run test. Right. And at the end we can echo status because we are going to put some something in status. Okay, so that's going to be our build process, right? So we we come back to this idea of uh, the allocations, right? Uh, again, I think maybe the easiest way to actually explain it is going to be to draw it. So let's try to do that. Right. So let's uh, let's create a new image. Right. Let me just do something white. So. OK, perfect. Um, so let's imagine that this entire thing is going to be our memory, right? This is the RAM memory. This is where, I guess, where the memory of the program starts. And this is the maximum capacity here at the end. 
So when we call the first time to break, we build this, uh, let's say this is the stack. I'm just going to do ST for the stack. Right, so this is our stack. On the stack, we put uh, variables, we pop them when we do plus or other instructions. So that's going to be the use for our stack. And then we can keep allocating, starting from this point, other objects, like maybe, I don't know, something that's useful for us in the long run in the assembly, right? So for example, how I think I want to actually implement our memory layout is that all the objects that can have a value, for example, even the integer, are actually going to be data types. So if we check again, read me, I think I want everything to be a data type. So for example, data int, data string, and so on are going to be data types. But these are going to be kind of private, right? They are going to be implemented by the compiler. So the user doesn't really have access to how the string data type looks like, right? I mean, probably it's going to be an integer for the length and then some weird stuff for the characters, but that's the problem. We don't know how this thing is going to look like, so it's going to be up to the compiler to actually implement it, right? And the integer is the same way. It's going to be some weird stuff in the memory for the actual number, but these things should be data types so i think how the data types are going to be implemented is that we are going to allocate on the on the on the heap here so let's just say we put here an integer which is going to take up eight bytes right and then on the stack we actually put let me just have more space it's actually going to be a pointer and this pointer points to the integer right and then let's imagine uh, that we also have like i'll put it here because i don't want to write on top of this let's say this is an i um, this is another pointer and here on the stack we have an ivec2 and the ivec2 let me just do something like uh, this so we can say this is the vec and if you remember, the VEC had two integers, right? So it has 2 times 8, 16 bytes. And this points to our IVEC. So, stupid. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, this, uh, so yeah, the idea would be that um, on the stack, we'll actually have pointers, right? And on, the, on this side, which is going to be our heap, like imaginary heap, we are going to store the actual data, right? That's my idea. And I think it's pretty decent. Like on the stack, we'll always have 8 byte sized words. So it's always going to be in 64, like memory addresses. And on the heap, we are going to store the actual values. So here, for example, we store integer. Here we store the IVEC2 and uh, so on next thing is in uh, in the cool language each object also had some other stuff so what i mean by that is we had classes right and classes had the following format they had a label to know what type it was they had an address to the dispatch table of functions and only then they had the fields but i think that in our case here we don't need a label and we don't need a dispatch table because we don't have methods so i think we are only going to store the fields in this heap i don't think we need any labels but even if we do later on it's going to be quite easy to add them all right it's not going to be that difficult i hope but yeah so you're going to say, okay, but for integer, you are um, consuming two, two ints, right, for one. So it's, um, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, right? We have an int pointer and then the int value. 
and for an IVEC we are gonna have the int pointer and then the value is gonna be two integers on the heap. So I think it kind of makes sense to me to use it like this. So that's how we are gonna try to use it. So yeah. Only problem is that we need a way to allocate memory and I think I'm just gonna steal it from the cool compiler. So let's go to allocator. And I'm just gonna steal all of this stuff. So let's steal this. Just to be safe, I'm gonna okay. You know what? Let's just let's just take it and we'll see how we fix the errors after that. So we have the memory layout. Let's go here. Memory layout, right? We are gonna have, as I said, the stack position and stack end we need this position in this position and then we'll have the heap position which is actually the stack end but it's nicer to just have another variable for it and the heap end now the the thing is the stack will always have the same size like it doesn't change uh, but our heap will be able to grow in size right and my reasoning is that on the stack you don't really like you're not really supposed to have that much stuff on the stack like if you if we think about it 64k 64k bytes it's quite a lot of pointers right i mean i don't think it's possible to have that many pointers so yeah it is what it is and even then i think we're gonna have data structures like list which is gonna live on the heap and here you have only a pointer to the list so hopefully it's gonna be safe so yeah that's what i think i think the stack is gonna have the same size and then the heap grows like this like usually in computers i think in programs that run like the os allocates the stack here and then the heap grows from the other side right it's it's both come to each other or something like that like the stack grows like this and the heap like this or something i mean i don't know it's uh, been a long time since i did any stuff like that so yeah so this is a bit uh, weird but again i think it's uh, it should be fine for our uh, like if it's not gonna work we just have to change how we do memory layout it's not gonna affect that much like the st or the parsing the tokenization of the tokens and building the logic like the logic is still gonna be stack contains pointers heap contains values it's just up to how we implement the memory layout where uh, where these things live like for now i think i'm gonna allocate 64k for the stack so 64k and then for the heap we allocate whatever whatever we need to add the values so that's what i'm gonna do here right let's see so allocator init I guess I'm gonna have allocator in it as a function. So here it's the break, it increments zero, syscall, it says the heap. And then when we do allocate, RDI contains the size in bytes, the stack is empty, and REX is the newly allocated memory. So how does this thing work? We save that. We set T0 to heap position. We increase by size. We check if it's okay. If it's not okay, we allocate a page. We save the new end of the heap. We increase the heap position, like the initial position. okay and we return 
the the old initial position from the beginning right so this entire stuff will be allocated all right so yeah if we call to allocate we are gonna get back rax and rx is gonna be a memory address and we know that rdi is how many bytes we can use at that address okay let's also implement some functions like uh stack in it damn it stack in it input it's nothing stack is empty or whatever and output nothing so we are gonna do the same thing almost uh, but i'm gonna do this stuff initialize the stack Oh, but what I think would be better to do is to actually have it like allocator. Everything is in allocator. So allocator in it, right? It uh, initializes. So here we initialize allocate stack. Allocate the stack 64k. Right, all of this allocates the stack, and then we get the current initialize the heap. So that's exactly what we do here in initialize uh, allocator. We allocate the 64k for the stack, and then we set the heap to basically be zero. So right now the heap is empty, right. And if we call to allocate, we are going to allocate one page and then reuse whatever we need to use, right? So it's, it's better to allocate in advance, I would say. And then just use, and then when you need to allocate, because if you need to allocate, let's say, eight bytes every one second, imagine how many syscalls that would be, right? But if you allocate one page and then... You, you call, okay, I want 8 bytes, 8 bytes, it's going to be like how many calls until you fill up a page, right? So it's not going to do six calls every time you allocate 8 bytes. So that's the idea. Okay, anyway, so initialize the memo memory. We are going to do a call allocator in it and if we take a look at our thing that's exactly what we did in uh, cool compiler we were calling to allocator in it so initialize the memory and then we call the main method right so let's see if it still compiles oh I guess we need uh, lock zero and these helper helper fields. So, what are these? If you ask, it's these are gonna be used for local variables. So lock zero is the first local variable, second one, and so on. And these are the arguments. So that's the. I have to copy it in the plus whatever register. Okay. Let's come here and paste them. So now we should have all of those variables. So it's it's still zero. So it's still fine. All right. So ah, first thing is that well, let's uh, run main example. 
we don't really have to say anywhere that we have this IVEC2 uh, data structure. Like in assembly, it won't exist, right? It won't really exist. But we have to figure out how we are going to implement the function, the constructor for it. So let's have here IVEC2 is going to be our function. Okay. Alright, stack, I think I'm gonna, my convention is gonna be always uh, the stack, like the functions that are generated by the compiler for uh, custom data structures are gonna be allocating, like putting their variables on the stack, right? That's my idea. That's how I want to do it. This one, sure, fair enough, it can be in RDI for some reason. Anyway, or maybe I want first to implement the int function. So the int constructor, but in um, in the language itself if you type so let's go in example if you type 69 the use of int here it's um, implicit right you don't have to write int after a literal because the compiler knows okay this is the type int it has a custom int constructor we just call it without having the user to type it. It's just going to be easier for us to work. Right, because otherwise, it, like, it becomes weird. Okay, anyway. So we are going to do int. Right, and on the stack, this is int constructor. What do we want to do here with the int constructor? So, as I explained here, the steps are quite simple. We want to create a pointer, so we need to allocate some memory. At that memory, we write our uh, int, and then on the stack, we push the pointer. So, let's, let's do that. Let's have here the stack containing the value so stack value int All right it's gonna be the int value let's do first all of all of these um all of these saves All right so here we save the return address set, set up the stack frame and then we restore the return address We need to call to allocate. No, I'm not, it's really, it's a bit meh that I have to, like I, that I do both registers and stack. I mean, I think I'm going to use stack for functions that are generated by the user and uh, registers for functions that are part of hmm, but would really make sense to use the stack here too let's try that let's try to change this thing to use the stack Um, <clears throat> or do we I don't know it's really like it's gonna be much easier if we keep just RDI holds the stuff and you just call to it and 
get the result in rx maybe we just keep it like that because it's gonna be called a lot of times so yeah anyway so as i said first step and maybe we also have these variables like t0 Right, so we let's allocate some local variables. We allocate two and then we deallocate two. So we can say t zero is gonna be allocate eight. Right, we allocate eight bytes. So Let's do that. Let's have move RDI uh, 8, call allocate, whoa, what the fuck did I do? Call allocate, and then we need to move into local 0RX, like this. And yeah, you just have to keep in mind that it's actually minus here, not plus, because rbp like the stack grows upwards i mean no idea anyways here it's minus right you have to go with minus so here we allocate eight bytes we store that into t0 okay and what what do you think is this t0 like do you think it's oh do you think it's p or i well yeah it's p right because it's um maybe i can wait, wait, no. yeah it's it's this the video that we have to write on the stack so now we have to push t0 on the stack and at the same time we have to write at uh, the address so we have to do something like t0 becomes our argument and we also have to do push t0 so how are we gonna do this one let's move into rdi our zeroth argument so how I just need an example of how I do that because I don't remember. Do I have arg0? Yeah, so for arguments, you actually have to do plus on rbp. I mean, I know it's weird, but so it's kind of like let's do, let's do the stack, right? So this is our call stack. And this is RBP, right? Um, when you call to a new function, you have to push on the stack the arguments, right? So the RBP moves. Then we store RBP somehow. Do we store it though? Yeah, we, we kind of store it, right? And here we subtract. So RBP is going to be here. And then we subtract from it. So we go here with the local variable. So these are the local variables and these are the arguments. So if you want to access arguments, you have to plus and go in this direction. And if you want to access local variables, you do minus and go in this direction. So that's the idea, right? Uh, arguments are with plus and local variables are with minus. Okay. So here we take our first argument. We put it into RDI. Then we put into RSI our T0 variable, so RBP minus log 0. We can do that. And then we move at RSI RDI. Right? We move the argument at the address of T0. So we just did 
and we just filled in this uh, this i. Okay, that's uh, good. And now we have to push t zero onto the stack. So let's maybe have a function. Push a late. No. Stack. I mean, I cannot do push because push is a word, right? Let's do allocator hmm. stack push. So stack push is gonna have contains the pointer that we add to the stack pointer or like the int but it's it's a pointer right contains the int 64 and i don't think we need to issue anything so nothing okay so now we uh we have to What we have to do here is uh, just what we did a few days ago when we uh, were implementing that weird uh, logic. Hmm. Right, but we kind of deleted all of, <laughs> all of those uh, files. Well, you know what? Vim is quite smart and it doesn't actually delete the files until you close it, so nice. Anyways, let me just, just let me look at this thing and, okay. So how this thing is going to work? So we said that RDI contains the in 64 points, right? Instead of doing this, we don't have to do it. So in RSI, we take the stack position, so the current stack position, which is the, let's say, here. We take it, and then we put at, the, uh, at that address, we write RDI. So here we write the P, like that. And then we increment the stack position variable with stack size which is 8 because we have um, in 64 pointers so we just add that thing we don't need the variables so that's that so this thing just pushes on our our imaginary stack it pushes the the pointer so what do we have to do Here we have to uh, stack push, right? And stack push, what did I say? RDI is the thing that we need to add. So we have to move into RDI. RBP minus RBG, RBP minus log zero. So uh, we push T zero on the like we just move it into RDI and then we call stack push. So this thing is going to push our int on the stack. Let's say int push because this is like the int constructor. Okay, and now let's do int pop. Let's copy this entire thing just to have uh, right, so int pop int pop right so int um accessor let's say or getter it's easier for me to write that. The input is nothing because 
Pope is gonna take the first item from the stack. The stack is nothing because um, we don't need it. And output is gonna be value int. Is gonna be the int value that we need to use. Let's see how we are going to do that. Because, I mean, if you think about it, the integers for V, I guess, are actually going to be pointers, right? Are not going to be actual ints. They should be pointers to other uh, integers from the stack. So, yeah. But, I mean, no, they are just going to be values. Wait. Uh, that's like an interesting point. Uh, I mean, now I'm questioning myself it, if it makes sense, but here we should have the ints. Like this is a pointer to our data structure, but the data structure, I think it should have integers in it, not pointers. But then what if you have a data structure with two Vs in it? And then it becomes weird. I mean, at the same time, if you actually think about it, like if you do access the X field, it should give you the memory address of this thing. And if you access the Y field, it should give you the memory address of the Y field. So then you have to use int pop to actually do, yeah, I, I guess it makes sense. Let's see, so int pop, like the hard thing is to just imagine that int pop is gonna expect that here you have an integer if you do a pop all right so let's see so we just save that what do we need to do to pop an integer so rx usually rx uh, has the int value Oh, and now is the, the real question. Should it be the int value or the pointer to the int value? Has the pointer to the int value. I think that's what I want to do to make my logic better. So when you pop something from the stack, you delete this thing and you put. So let's say I pop the integer right i put this into rx so now i have the pointer if i want to access the integer i just dereference this pointer so let's check out example.asm and at some point here i was popping i guess this is a So this stuff, wow, let's go and test. So popping, popping should do the following. We put into RDI, so this thing is not gonna be needed. That's, that's for sure. Into RDI, we put the current stack position. Then we subtract stack size from that so if you think about it uh, let's say we have this stack and we have a pointer here and a pointer here 
the stack position is going to be this pointing to this new empty space so we have to subtract stack size to point to the empty uh, to the field space right we have to subtract stack size and then we also do this one which i guess we could do that first and then this is enough like we subtract stack size from the stack position and then we take the value but imagine if this was multi-threaded right like this could be a race condition we read after write so i think we should keep it like this who knows i think that's the way to actually do it correctly hmm. All right. so first you read and then you actually uh, subtract stack size from stack position let's do it like this let's keep it safe so now in rdi we actually have uh, this thing which is a p which is a p and i think i'm happy with that result mm. i'm just going to move that into r rx as the result right and we don't need uh, local variables so int pop and let's have it as a function so this is stack push and stack pop so stack pop rd contains the uh, nothing and here rx contains well it's exactly the same thing r r a x contains this thing that we pop from the stack but let's um, stack pop and we are gonna take this thing and replace it here but let's do rx rx so that rx actually like it's shorter nice so now we can do stack pop actually just call stack pop and yeah fair enough this is just the address we don't get the value but the referencing is gonna be a separate thing like i want to work like i want all functions to work with pointers not with the values i think that's how i want to do it so yeah anyway let's um let's see so we are gonna push a 69 on the arguments and then we do int dot push so we call int push then we have to add hmm i actually forgot how we do that so let me just check maybe it's one of the examples Like calling functions. Hmm. Anyway, it's going to be easier if I just go to SRC assembler and then we look for dispatch call. This one is just a print, I don't care about it. Emit emit this one right so we i guess i still have to push um just so we have an even number of arguments 
but not right now. And at the end I was adding to RSP. So I have to add to RSP. RSP 1. Or I guess it's 8 technically. Because it's word size. So I could do... Yeah, whatever. And then, what if we call int pop? So I guess the exit of the program should actually call int pop and then move into RDI keyword from Rx. So we dereference the pointer and then we do the syscall so that's how the exit should probably look like if i want to do stuff like example like this all right so here we push this on the stack let's see so this would be equivalent to this program like without the um, I guess that's the that's my way of thinking. Okay, so let's see if we are <laughs> today we are the compiler. Sixty nine. That worked first try. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So yeah, I, I'd say that's that's the idea. You'd say, oh, but why don't you use the actual stack for? Um, I don't know, I didn't think about that. <laughs> Excuse me. Like, what? I could do that. You're telling me I could have done this? Hmm. No, but I think if I'm gonna do functions, I. Hmm. If you use this stack, right, for um, your pointers or variables, and then you use calls, you are gonna have extra garbage on the stack. Or I guess, no, not garbage, but re like unrelated things to your data. So I think it needs a separate stack like we discussed here. I think that's the, the way to do it. So yeah, I guess whenever we have random integers uh, like this in the code, we are going to interpret them with this code. Push on the stack and then a call to int push. So you don't have to actually do int push yourself. um that's like understood by the compiler that it has to do int push okay All right and now let's try to think how would we do something like um let's say 42 27 IVEC 2. Like, how would we build the IVEC? How would we build the IVEC? So, for that, let's try to implement the IVEC function. So, um, the thing is that int would have the same name right for even for push and for pop so i i had to um, do separate functions like int push int pop but for for the ivec i don't think it's needed i think we can just do ivec2 as a function then let's copy paste 
this stuff. Okay, I think we also need all of this. And then this is the IVEC2 constructor. I think the IVEC2 constructor is gonna get on the stack. Uh, so push I said doesn't return anything. But maybe it would be nice to return its own stack position, like ah, not stack position, but address. But I mean, yeah, we don't need that because no, that's this is weird. We don't need to have anything on the stack. We are just gonna use, yeah. We are just gonna use. Okay, so then, maybe for this one is gonna be. So the stacks are not gonna really be used. Right for for any of these, I think. So, how about? Yeah, that makes sense. The stack won't really be used. So how about here we get the argument in RDI so that it's going to be a bit easier. Right, what if here RDI is the int value? And we can say, I don't know, like, for example, T1 is RDI, just to use T1. So, just store RDI in T1, and here it's T1 minus log 1. So what if we do this instead so that we don't push on the stack and we just do move RDI. So it's a bit shorter again. Like how about int push just uses uh, the, uh, the registers. I think it makes sense. Let's test it again. Let's make sure that it, it still works. Okay, that's nice. Right. I mean, sure, why not? Let's just use the RDI RSI, you know, the syscall convention for registers for the for this. Like if a function is implemented in the compiler, let's use the registers. Okay. But even then, the this stuff Ah, we need to allocate 16. Right, we need to allocate 16. And then we need to pop two integers. Right, we need to pop an integer and save it. So let's see address of t0 so x basically uh, is gonna be int pop but i think we also need to reference this one Huh. 
that's interesting. Mm, no, we don't reference it. It's uh, just int pop. So, what we are gonna do here is call int pop. Right, pop the integer into rex. Then we need rsi to be this stuff. Or I guess RDI might as well and we store RX into it so here we pop an integer from the stack right what that does is it removes this thing from here and it gives us P in RX so I guess we store this thing in here. It kind of makes sense. We store it here. And then we need to pop another integer. We take P0 but here we need to do stack SZ or like plus 8 because we have an offset and then we push T0 on the stack so let me just go through, through this integer again. I guess integer is going to be special because it's an actual value. Right, so here we allocate 8, or I guess a word, a stack word. Here we store this thing. If I want this to look as similar as possible, just because I can do move rx rbp minus lock one, right? So this is just that. just to make it look a bit more similar to the rest so maybe this is an algorithm itself store it um... yeah it looks like a it might be an algorithm right like this thing is going to be copy pasteable and here we'll have zero times eight one times eight and so on for each thing and here instead of int pop it depends what type this variable has like if this thing is a uh, uh, ivec then we would do oh ivec to pop hmm. interesting we might need ivec to pop so then this should be like push. I mean, we could call it push. Doesn't really matter. So this is the constructor for an IVEC. So how does this thing work again? We do boilerplate, then we allocate 16 bytes on the heap. So here we allocate two cells, right? because that's the data structure it has two integers then we pop an integer from the stack we hope that we have an integer on the stack 
right? And what this does is give us a P, which is a pointer. And then we store that P into the first field of our structure. Uh, call int pop. Then we do another int pop and we store it in the second field of the structure. And again, since this is a pointer, all of these are going to be plus 8. Right? So depending on the type, here you change this thing into whatever you need. And then we push t0 on the stack, so we add the address to the vec. Right, damn, this is hard. And actually, pop is going to be the same thing for all variables. There's no such thing as int pop or yeah, it's going to be stack pop every time because we get the pointer. Okay, that's that's good news. So we just remove this. And let's search for int pop. So this is going to be stack pop. Right here we just stack pop. Right, it's quite nice now. So for um, like constructing an IVEC, you just have to pop an, uh, an address, you store it in the first field, you pop the second one, you store it in the second field, and then you push the address of this thing. Yo, that's much better. Okay, okay. So, let's say we want to do this one, right? 42, and then we push another thing, 27. So, what do we think is going to be on uh, the return code? 27, correct. And what if now we call ivec2.push? <laughs> okay. Whoops. Oopsie doopsie. And a little fucky wacky. Okay, what did I think was gonna happen? Well, I thought it's gonna be 42 because that's the first int. But apparently not. Okay, we are. Let's see. So, push. It means it did a pop, did another pop. Right, so it did a pop, another pop. And then it stored the address of each thing on the stack. We maybe we could draw that like step by step what happened. So this is the middle line. Okay, so we we pushed an integer. Let's say this is the address and we got its value here. We push another integer, this is another address, and we got its value here. And then we decided to push an IVEC. So we do a stack pop. But first we allocate 64 bytes. So first we allocate this part here. 16 bytes. We pop a number. So this thing is going to give us this value, so a pointer, and we store that here, and this is removed, right, and then we call pop again, 
and we get another minus another address and we store it here and we remove both of them right we remove both of them and then we add on the stack t0 which is the start of this thing i guess so now if we do a stack pop we should get back this minus and if we dereference this thing it should give us this value so it's going to be also a minus okay so it's not really gonna be okay fair enough so let's implement then ivec2.x let's implement ivec2.x maybe yeah maybe it's i don't know because i thought that it's gonna give us the first items value but i guess here we store an address so we need to go another reference maybe we can simulate that just to see if i'm right by doing something like this Twenty-seven. Wait, wait, wait. What? Twenty-seven. I thought it's gonna be forty-two. Oh, yeah, it's twenty-seven. Yeah. Okay, so it is like that. All right. We have to dereference it again. So then let's implement ivec two x getter. What is it gonna output? well 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 it's gonna output nothing really it's gonna put x on the stack so we allocate eight right we allocate eight we pop from the stack it's gonna be huge we pop from the stack right we pull from the stack and we get the x field so it's gonna be pop we have the value in rex oh shit yeah it's gonna be rx right it's gonna be rax that's all and then we push this thing we push t0 so now if i call ivec2.x it's fucking 16 um what one sec so here we allocate eight hmm i guess that we need to take the memory from there but i don't think that's possible like that it's invalid operand so we need to do something else we need uh, okay so here we pop right so when we pop we take the starting address of this place in memory take the starting address right how am i gonna do this little algorithm 
So we pop, we get that address in our X. And we need to dereference it. So I would do Rx, few word, but it's inferred. And here is going to be 0 times 8, or you know, 1 plus 8, and so on. So we dereference. So we go from here to its actual um, value. And then we do this stuff and this stuff. So I think. Hmm. I think that's the algorithm. But the problem is... Problem is that this only works for int. Like what if this x was some other type? Hmm. Like if x is some other type, you need to mem copy it somehow. Because like what I actually need, uh, what I actually want to do is to. But at the same time, I know that x is an int, so I can just assume that here I want to move an integer. Right, and if it's gonna be a string, I can assume that as well. But maybe that's the the point for um, because right now what I want to do is to copy from here to the newly allocated memory. Wait, 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 wait. yeah. Right, I want to copy from he from this memory into this place. Like sure, I guess this this will work. It doesn't fucking work. What? What? I haven't called. Yeah, I have called it. What the fuck? So push and then I call this x thing hmm so like I allocated an empty space right if I call stack pop I should get this value if I dereference it so this thing if I dereference it it brings me here, right? So I guess at this stage I have RDI which is um, the address to this thing and I also have the address to this thing. So I want to copy Yeah, like Rx is the God damn it, I have to reference it again. So it's like Stack pop is gonna give me uh, the value I have here, and if I dereference it, it just brings me to this place in memory. So I might have to dereference it again. Hmm. All right, that's true. I have to dereference it again. So if I dereference it once, I get this value from here. And if I dereference it again, I go to the actual place. Or I guess the actual value. So then how are we gonna implement this? So many arrows, it's uh, 
it's impossible to know what what happens there so yeah like stack pop is gonna give me the address of the data structure like let's let's think like any types right stack pop is gonna give me the address of the data structure so the beginning of the data structure if I dereference it once if I do this thing it gives me what's inside right like what if I do here plus 8 42 right so that gives me what's inside of the first field or the second field and so on so it gives me what's inside of the first field I guess here we need to know uh, what size each field has so that we know what offset to use here so this is like is it on the same line yeah so here we okay let's add some comments maybe it's gonna be more helpful pop the ivec2 from the stack this gives us the address of ivec2 get the field based on offset in this case first field zero All right is the first field then this part is interesting here we address of the new item on the heap like here we need to copy the this is basically t0 like let's just leave it like that this is t0 and here this should be a copy function we want to copy from this address to this address right and we need to copy eight so we need some kind of copy function for this one and um, here we allocated eight so we need to copy eight and this is just it just happens that it looks like this I need a copy function here to copy from RAX into RDI right I'm pretty sure we have some kind of copy inside of lib Uh, not here but maybe here copy mem copy yeah we have we have mem copy so we could use this mem copy destination source number of bytes so destination source number of bytes I already forgot but we need to do a call to mem copy and we have rdi is the destination um, rsi is the source and rdx is how much Move rdx 8 so i think this should still work yeah so for example if this was uh, dot y we would do here plus eight because it's the second field right so that's that's how we, we are supposed to do it and imagine that x field was i don't know something like 
24 bytes and then you would have here 24 and here also 24 right like that's something that could happen in the future am i right you allocate some memory and then you pop and then let's say the first field is really big so you copy more from that memory maybe it makes sense we can try so i think this is gonna be an algorithm right for for copying a field so we we pop the beginning of the data structure we index the field based on the offset so we need to know the size of each structure right we kind of need to know the size of each structure that's interesting well that's something known at compile time pretty much uh, then we need this thing to be like okay this is the destination where we need to copy the new like the field here we need to copy the field this is the address of the field that we need to copy and this is the size which should be equal to this like the size of the field okay makes sense makes sense so let's also do the y getter oh. y getter here we need to pop y and here we need to add the offset which is just 8 because the first field has size 8 right first field has a size of 8 so there's that but that should be everything here and now we can just say here y and it's going to be 42 and if we say x it's going to be 27 okay right so dup, dup function should be interesting to implement just to see how dup would work because i have a feeling that dup is gonna suck Not really, I think, yeah, let's see how we could implement dup, and I guess dup is going to be the last thing. So how are we going to do dup? Let's copy, I have a feeling that it's going to look like the accessor for uh, for uh, that. So let's, let's go here and let's implement dup. Hopefully it's not... Uh, Let's do some func dot dup. I don't know, like our functions start with func. So let's store everything. Oh, but dup is like no. It, I mean, what the fuck? Wait. Yo, dup should blah blah blah. Dup might be kind of simple actually so i don't think we need to allocate anything i don't need we think holy shit i had a fucking stroke okay anyways i don't think we'll need to do any of these i think we'll need to only do some kind of stack push so how our how are we gonna do that i think we need stack peak for that so let's do pop and let's have it stack stack peak 
stack pick. Yeah, what? Okay, so stack pick. All right, so we just have to not do that for uh, stack pick. That's uh, easy. So what are we gonna do in dupe? So I, I was uh, afraid that a dupe will duplicate somehow the same pointer and then if we overwrite, like it's gonna be really messy, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Let's see. So stack peak, stack peak, right? So now we have the, the pointer that we want to duplicate in uh, RAX. So we just have to push it. Uh, I forgot how stack push works. RDI is the pointer that we want to add on the stack. So I think this is dupe. All right, let's try to call function dupe. Let's try to dupe. Let's see what happens. 27. Interesting. And what if we call again to that? Ah, fuck. Ah, fuck. I mean, I thought it's gonna work. <laughs> I thought it's gonna work. No. Shit. So, question is, why didn't dupe work? What failed? What failed when I did dupe? What failed so bad? So, we peek, right, and we get the... I mean, this one deserves its own drawing, right? So let's imagine that we have this shit. So we push. You know, let's do it only for an integer, just to. But I mean, hmm. It's not that fun for an integer, but let's let's imagine that we have only int, right? So we have this thing, we allocate it, and we place the integer here. We call dupe. So dupe peeks behind, takes this, and it just pushes it here. So it's the same pointer. Is that bad? Like, let's imagine, hmm. okay, all right. okay, this is the other integer, then we remove them and we add the vec, oops, so we add the vec, and the vec data structure has these two pointers, right, something like that, these two are removed, so here we call dupe. We just copy this value, right, this thing. So these two things point to the same thing here. So we call ivec2.y, for example. We allocate an integer. We delete this and we push on the stack. New memory. We just mem copy this here so it's gonna be in new integer right so why does it crash mm. i vec2 let's do i vec2 dot x twice What if I push more and just do this thing? Like what if we still doesn't work? What the fuck? 
what if I do it like this? That works, obviously. If I do it like this, it doesn't work. Okay, okay, I see you, I see you. Fun loop. Interesting. Indeed, that's interesting. So it means that maybe this is bugged. I have a 2.x. But I don't see how. I don't see how. So we pop. Straight up just removing that shit from the stack. Get the field. Huh. I could just GDB this bitch, but... Damn, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> okay. Anyway. That's interesting. It just fails. Segmentation fault. Yeah, I'm not really sure. It's weird. I wanted to check the memory, but I don't have GDB and I'm not gonna spend time now to install it. I want GDB PEDA anyway, so... Uh, yeah, I guess that could be interesting to figure out, but okay, what can go wrong? Because we saw that this is kind of fine. Right, let's, let's remove the dupe and let's call IVEC2 twice, because even if I call it twice, yeah, yeah, obviously it uh, segmentation faults, I guess. Huh. But why? That's the real question. So what does ivec2.x actually do? So it allocates some memory. It calls pop. So it removes the thing from the stack. Right, it just purely removes it. Get the field based on offset, so first field or second field, whatever. It gets what we just allocated, so this thing is fine, it's not like in whatever place. Puts our eggs there, and then it just mem copies it. Interesting. I mean, I really don't see anything wrong with ivec2.x or y. And here it stack pushes. So I don't really see... Oh, you know what? I'm fucking... Mm. Yeah, you know why? Because if I call this thing, I need to swap. Right, I need to swap. So we also need dot swap because the last thing on the stack is gonna be an integer I'm already bad at my own language okay let's let's try to do swap swap should okay swap shouldn't be difficult he said right swap shouldn't be swap so swap what are we gonna do Um, we should pop from the stack. Right. Let's do, let's imagine how swap works. Let's do like a big bucket and let's do two items. So we, let's say A and B, we take A out, bam, we take A out, then We put it into a register, I guess. We can take B out and put it into a register and then push A and push B. Oh, that's easy. So I could just stack pop, but is there a more efficient way? That's, that's the real question. Is there? 
I don't think so. So we pop. We put. Oh, you know how I'm gonna do it? I'm gonna pop and then I'm gonna put uh, it like this. I'm gonna use the local variable. So let's say something like t0 becomes a, right? That's, that's that. And then we do the same thing and say t1 becomes b. t1 becomes b. So now we have to push A and then push B. So stack push, stack push and um, yeah, should get the argument in RDI. So let's see. Oh, already had that. Interesting. So push A and push B. Right, so this is swap. This is swap. So let's see that I think now it's gonna work, right? So we run it and we get 27 because 27 is on X. But if we do Y, which should be 42, we get 42. So that's nice. And so here it's going to be in RAX, right? Let's do move R D I R A X and R A X R D I and let's do something like now R D I R A X and it's going to be Um, what? Oh, obviously. So I might want to use RBX. Because RBX is not going to be overwritten. Fuck what? Wait, what? Huh. Let me just do push RAX instead. And then I do pop RDI. And I just add. I mean, what? Why is it zero? Let me just move RDI 100. That's so strange. So here I push it. I pop into RDI. Oh, mm, that's that's why. Because I actually have to do something like move RX RX, and then. Move RX, RX, right? 84. Why? It's, I mean, it's inferred that it's a Q word, but what? I think I need to also stack of them. So maybe it's not needed to do that because they are on the stack. So let's do stack pop, which gives me so move RX, push RX, then we do the same thing again. We pop. RDI. Here I just want to add them together just for fun. So then add 
RDI RX. So I guess this should do 69. Okay, I was over complicating it, right? Because at this point, our stack is X and then Y. So we can just pop the integer, move it into uh, RX, like take the value, take the value and then add them together. So yeah, that's, that's kind of it, right? We, I guess we understand better how are we gonna convert stuff into assembly now. We have a good example with IVEC2, I would say. Uh, some good comments that we need to keep in mind. And uh, yeah, let's try to do the assembly. Right, that's the next goal. So yeah, like maybe this, this is actually the function for plus, right? You pop, you interpret it as an integer, pop again, integer, do the plus, and then you push back on the stack. So maybe that's what I'm missing here, right? So I'll call int push, and now we can we can actually have it like this. So this is the plus algorithm, but I'm too lazy to actually write it. So yeah, I think this is a good example or maybe let's let's write the stack program actually so let's go into example sl so this creates the ivec then we call dupe ivec2.x swap ivec2.y and then plus All right that's what oh 42 yeah that's what this program would compile into, in my opinion. It's kind of okay-ish, let's say. So yeah, so it's, it's just going to be a sequence of these calls, right? We just need to figure out how, how are we going to implement them, but looks like we kind of have so yeah i guess the main difficulty was coming up with a good memory layout and i think this is decent uh, it doesn't look decent right now but i think it's decent on the stack we keep the pointers like this is the summary on the stack we keep the pointers and on the heap so this is the stack and on the heap we keep the actual values or whatever and basically all the functions and everything in stacklang will work with pointers. And in the assembly code, we actually switch to values and do the calculations. So I think hopefully it's fine for now. So let's see next time, how are we gonna convert these things into assembly? Yeah, I did not have time to finish the function, but uh, it is what it is. So yeah, let's try next time to, uh, maybe next time we'll actually start with doing this as the AST and then we'll um, convert AST data structure into assembly like this, right? Of course, we won't have the comments and all of that, but I think it's good enough. Right, and probably from here, like below this stuff, this is going to be like part of the compiler itself, right? All of these lines, like 200 lines of code is the compiler, already existing code, and these things are going to be generated automatically. So yeah, the, I think this is going to be the biggest challenge, the fields. Uh, constructor should be pretty easy. Well, that's what he said. Hopefully. We'll see. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, of course, these three functions, the const or I guess the constructor and the getters for the fields are going to be the main challenge. 
because um, functions defined by user are going to be easier just going to be a sequence of calls right you, you can see it it's just call dupe call this call this this one this one and so on so these are going to be easy to implement uh, in assembly but the hard part is going to be the constructor and the getters because that's and th those are the most useful ones uh, as well so yeah but um for now yeah we, we managed to implement something really simple in assembly adding two numbers the fields of a structure so yeah we just have to translate our code now automatically so we did it manually now we have to do it uh, with help of c so let's see next time so see you